You can also use log law number three to put a constant multiplier back into the logarithm. Like in these last two examples, I was mentioning how you could take the exponent from the logarithm and drop it out front like that. Well, you could also take the number out front and bring it back in, again, because logarithm laws can be applied in either order, because they're both equivalent. So like, say for example, in this exam, um, in this bullet point, negative one fifth multiplied by log base five of 32, if I have a number out front, that could always be moved into the logarithm as an exponent on the 32. So let me, sorry, let me get my pen out so I can write this um, somehow. My thing got messed up. But this would be equal to log base 5 of 32 raised to the negative 1 fifth power. That 5 is a little bit not so good looking. And now I could try to use my uh, rules of exponents to try to figure out what that would leave me with. And a negative one fifth power is equal to uh, the reciprocal raised to the fifth root by rules of exponents. So, you know, I could rewrite this as um, one over the fifth root of 32. And the fifth root of 32 uh, is exactly two. So I'd be left with a log base five of one half. And this would be, you know, a way of simplifying or rewriting uh, it in this particular way. I could even now break this down, since I've, I'm now left with a fraction, into log base five of the first minus log base five of the second. Um, and, and, and this is just another thing is like, well, what's the answer? Where do I stop? Where does this whole process stop? There's no exact right answer. It's just a matter of rewriting it, changing the form. There's so many different rules behind how exponentials behave and about how logarithms behave. What is important is that you know these rules exist and you can use them and you kind of understand. I mean, ideally you kind of understand why they make sense, but uh, if not, you at least are aware of they're existing. And even if they're a little bit fuzzy, uh, you can always know, well, I can go back and look at the rules themselves, reference them and use them if need be. And even here, right, the log of one is always zero. So this would be, leave me with negative log base five of two. And again, lots and lots of different ways of writing it. Um, so again, there's no correct answer, but the goal is to use different rules and play around with them for the sake of fun. So uh, looking at a couple other ones, the last one I wanted to talk about is the change of Bayes formula, or I like to call it log law number four, just because. I, I like to number them and reference them when, you know, when I'm teaching particular subjects. But here, what it's, just to revisit, what it states is that if I have a log base B of X, I could always rewrite that as the log base A of X divided by the log base A of B. Or a way of saying it is I can take the base, put it on top, or I mean, the base goes on bottom and the input will go on top. And I can change that logarithm base B to log of any base. So say, for example, I had the log base seven of 11 and I wanted to know what this is. Now, of course, a calculator could, you, you could calculate the log base seven of 11 by using the log base formula, but actually not all calculators have log base fun of any base functions. They, a lot of calculators only have the common log and the natural log programmed into their basic form. And really the reason why most calculators don't have logs of any base is because the change of base formula is so simple and you don't all you really need is one base and you can evaluate any base logarithm that's the point of the change of base formula um but again here i'm not looking for what's the answer because the answer would be approximately 1.23 would be the power i would need to take 7 to get to 11. but what i wanted to show you is how it would look if i do change the base and the, the point is i can actually use any base a but it would always be log of x divided by log base a of b. So I could use the common log and this would be totally true. That would be literally it uh, by the change of base formula. And let's just confirm that this makes sense. If I take the common log, which is base 10, divided by the common log of seven, notice that gives me exactly the same thing, not a coincidence. And so how you can kind of remember this is if you wanna evaluate the log of any base of a number, you just take the common log of the number divided by the log of the base. 
And again, to remember this, I recommend that you remember base goes on bottom, input goes on top, or it's kind of like this one divided by this one. Or you could think about a single log as changing into a, a division of two logs, if we're thinking about it more algebraically. Uh, and you could also even use the natural log if you wanted as well, because the, the point of the log law is that you could use any base, and I just wanted to show you that that will also be equivalent to log base 7 of 11. And yes, we get the same thing. And, you know, the question might be, well, how do I know which one to use? It doesn't really matter. You can rewrite a logarithm as any base. So we tend to use the more common bases like the common log or the natural log. Uh, and looking at the next one, the thing to remember is uh, the, the, it's not always about the bigger number on top. It's always just about the input on top. So we'd have the natural log of the input divided by the base. And when, when it is a little bit stranger when the input is smaller than the base, but that's totally fine. It would just mean that we're going to have a fractional answer. Um, and if we look at what this would give us, we get approximately 0.68, but it, would, it should be equal to log base 25 of nine, because again, that change of base formula always uh, is good to go. Um, and the last thing I just wanted to mention in this video is uh, just to sort of revisit the concept of a logarithm. What's the point? There's all these rules, there's all these behaviors, um, but the point of a logarithm is to determine what exponent we need to get from one part to the other. When the, num when the numbers are like 7 and 11, it's not always obvious what power I need to take 7 to, to get to 11, and so it's not clear. But that's why, you know, that's the reason we have a calculator, right? We can use that calculator to figure out uh, what is an approximated exponent to get from one point to the other. Uh, but also, you know, say we were trying to figure out this particular logarithm, um, log base 57 of 185,000, um, 193. And the, what, I, what, I want, what I want to illustrate with this example is if I evaluate a logarithm and I get a particular answer with my calculator, what does that mean and what does that actually tell me? Um, and again, the kind of the key here is a logarithm always tells me what power I connects those two numbers. Five, 57 raised to what power gives me the answer. And if I get a very, e a very simple number like three, what that tells me is that this number is a power of this number and it tells me what power it is, the, the third power, the 57 to the third is 185. Or, you know, a sort of a different way of looking at this is it's also a cube root. If I were to take the, um, if I were to take the cube root of 185, 193, that would give me exactly 57 because that's the power that connects them. So to summarize, a logarithm tells me what power connects the numbers together. Um, and when I get a nice, easy answer, what all that tells me is that there is a simple connection. Those numbers are, one number is a power of the other. And a lot of times, they're not simple powers. The power could be a decimal, or it could be a very awkward number. In those cases, it, it's just because those numbers have no relationship. But a logarithm tells me what relationship those numbers have. Uh, in a common log, base 10 is so useful because our numerical system is built on 10, and it helps me understand the scientific notation connection um, between particular numbers.